Hello, we're here with Commissioner Hillary Franz, who is running for re-election for Commissioner of Public Lands. Would you like to go ahead with a two minute um, introduction? Yeah, great. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I, have, of course, love this district. This is my home district. I've been living in this uh, Magnolia for since 2015. And um, so honored to be able to join you tonight. I, I am running for my second term for Commissioner of Public Lands. I had the great fortune uh, to be elected in 2016 to serve. Um, we have made huge progress in addressing our most significant environmental, social, and economic challenges in Washington State. Um, in my role as Commissioner of Public Lands, we're on the front lines of a rapidly changing climate from wildfires, drought, responding to floods, uh, landslides, and ocean acidification that is decimating our shellfish and our salmon. And we've made that one of our front and foremost uh, number one priorities, uh, developing the first climate resilience plan, now working to develop a carbon sequestration strategy to protect our working forests and, and our agricultural lands. And at the same time, doing it in a way that's recognizing that throughout our state, we are facing huge social and economic challenges, not just in the urban areas, but our rural areas where we see generational poverty, um, generation after generation. I have worked tirelessly to tackle that issue and begin to ensure that our environment and our economy are working together for the long term for every Washington resident. And I am running again because we got a lot more work to do and we've made huge progress to date, but we've got a lot more to do, especially in the light of COVID and the human health disaster that we're facing right at the same time we are facing some huge national, uh, natural disasters of wildfires. Great, thank you. Uh, now we'll move into the prepared questions. Uh, Robert has posted those there in the chat box if you would like to read along. Um, and actually, Robert is up for the first question. So would you like to go ahead? And Nicole, can I ask you one question? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. What's the uh, time I have to respond oh, to each question? Yes, have, sorry, okay. two minutes. Two minutes, okay, great. Mm -hmm. right. All right, uh, so the first question is, how would you balance the importance of conservation with the commissioner's fiduciary duty to cultivate timber har harvests for the Common School Trust Fund. Yeah. So our number one responsibility, in my belief, is to ensure that every child has a healthy environment, but also has a healthy opportunity to get education. And too often we see that and believe that the harvesting of timber is counter to a healthy environment, when the reality is that our working forests we all depend on, whether it's the toilet paper we seem to be buying at an unbelievable pace and scale with COVID or our built environment. That's growing sustainably here in Washington State is the most environmental thing we can do. I believe that as a manager of our public lands, because we manage it generationally um, for each generation um, going forward, we can do that in a sustainable way. We, I believe we have to have conservation forest land, our old growth, most um, amazing habitat, as well as having working forest land that we depend on and make sure that we can actually it grow our working forest land, that they're not converted to subdivisions and developments, which lead to worse environmental damage. In addition, I believe we put way too much focus just on working forest lands as our only source for funding for schools and counties. The reality is we have over 10,000 acres of commercial, industrial, and residential land, some right in downtown Seattle, that is generating very little money, if any, for our schools and counties. I am now growing those opportunities for more residential and commercial development within our urban areas that are already stretched and providing and needing to provide more housing and economic opportunity. We are also expanding our renewable energy portfolio, wind and solar. We've completed 21 wind leases. Now we've completed two largest solar leases in Washington State with 33 on the way. And in that, we move from generating zero to $1.36 an acre to about $1,100 to $1,400 an acre. It's a 98,000 percent increase for our schools. Thank you. And counties. Thank you. Um, Alice, would you like to ask a question too? Yeah, sure. Um, do you support a just transition to deal with climate change, such as the Green New Deal, 
which would bring carbon emissions down to zero in the next decade or two while investing in those most impacted uh, who are often low income marginalized communities of color. I do believe that we need to do a just transition to move to a cleaner um, environment and a cleaner society, one that recognizes that climate change is already here and we're responding to it. We are developing two ways to do that. One is by working to expand our clean energy and make sure that it is creating local jobs, everything from wind and solar to biomass and even geothermal mapping that we are now doing for the entire state. We're also looking at the opportunities for um, ensuring that we are, have working forest lands and conservation forest lands because we know our trees are our greatest carbon sequestration opportunity as well as agriculture. We've been losing millions of acres every single year and, and every single decade in agriculture and forestry. As we've seen some of the fastest population growth in Washington state. My belief is we have a responsibility and to ensure we're not only stop losing our working forest and working agriculture land, which is a carbon sequestration opportunity, but actually expand and grow it, which creates local jobs, One minute. Business, resilience and health. We've also believed that we need to create opportunities around creating more resilient communities because climate change is already here. And so we've been working with labor to help develop opportunities from pump storage and addressing our water deficiencies to the context of forest health because our forests are dying and leading to more catastrophic wildfires. Um, and in that way, we're creating thousands of jobs every single year of getting people out on the land and making our forests more resilient to climate change. Every part of our climate plan, are not only in the mitigation and carbon sequestration, but in the resiliency has a job economic component for every single county of this state. Thank you. Um, Hannah, would you like to go ahead with uh, question three? Yeah. Um, okay. What funding or policy changes are necessary to effectively combat the increasing frequency of forest fires? Can you see the question one more time? Make sure yes. Uh, what funding or policy changes are necessary to effectively combat the increasing frequency of forest fires? Yeah. So when I came into this position in 2017, we came on the heels of the three worst years of wildfire. Unfortunately, 2018, we had a significant number of fires, the most ever in Washington State's history, 1,850 with 40% west of the Cascades. In 2017 and 2018, I took on the effort of tackling this issue. One, building the first wildfire strategic plan in Washington State. It's a 10 year wildfire plan that set for specifically what we need to have the resources to reduce these fires and be able to put them out quickly and contain them. I also, uh, with my team, developed a 20 year forest health plan because part of why we're seeing more catastrophic wildfires is we have 2.7 million acres of forest in central and eastern Washington alone that are already dead or in the process of dying. And that's why they're literally going up like kindling. Um, we have now put forward a plan that has us treating 70,000 acres a year over the next 20 years. And we're now building the plan for the west side. The challenge is funding. Um, because we had this plan in place though, we secured for the first time ever wildfire funding and forest health. $50 million over the last biennium that is the most ever in Washington State's history uh, to be able to fund the forest health work and to be able to fund the wildfire strategic plan to have the air resources, the firefighters and the equipment. Fortunately, we had the forest health plan actually I had it adopted by the legislature. 30 seconds. So they're now very much committed to actually implementing it. We put forward last year a critical bill that was to, would create a dedicated funding stream um, that would come from property and casualty insurance premiums. It's the second year in a row. It did not move forward. We will be looking at developing Ten seconds. Um, a funding stream so that we aren't every single year begging for funding, but we wanna make sure it doesn't come at the loss of other resources that the state needs, especially in light of COVID. Great, thank you. This um, is hard. I, <laughs> Sherry, uh, would you like to go ahead with question number four? Sure. Um, President Trump has attempted to open coastal waters to oil drilling for the first time in decades. Do you support offshore oil drilling? 
If not, what steps would you take to oppose it in Washington state? I am absolutely against <laughs> offshore um, oil drilling. I actually um, was up in Alaska after the huge um, oil spill that we know decimated thousands of beaches, acres of beaches, and also the fishing industry up there in that community. Um, in Alaska. I have stood up against it and prohibited and said there's no way this will happen, especially because our shellfish um, is a huge part of our coastal economies, along with our fishing. Um, and specifically, any ability to get um, oil to the shore would have to go and secure a lease from uh, the Department of Natural Resources, which I oversee because we manage all of the waterways from the ordinary high water mark out three miles. Um, I would ban it and make sure that they could never get that lease. Thank you. Um, and now we'll go into our uh, follow-up questions. Uh, would anybody like to start with that? The responses to these are one minute, one minute apiece. Any follow-ups? Oh, Brittany. Hi, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the kind of changes that we could see here in our urban environment to affect uh, public land statewide. When you say what kind of changes we could see in our urban environment, um, specifically you mean, can you just give me more specific? Uh, I guess I want to, I, th I think that people in cities tend to feel sort of disconnected from public lands. And I was wondering if you could expand maybe a little on the way that our life here in the 36th district has an impact on the public lands statewide. Yep. So first of all, the public lands I oversee is 2.6 million acres of aquatic land. So the entire coast, the Puget Sound, and your rivers, lakes, and streams. So Lake Union. Uh, is part of the waters we manage as well as Puget Sound. Part of our um, goal is not only increasing salmon habitat restoration and protection on the Puget Sound and our lakes, um, but also public access. So we are working tirelessly to actually expand um, the salmon habitat uh, that is right in there. In addition to that, I oversee the urban forestry program. Um, and as we know, in our, air, our urban areas, we're seeing a loss of significant tree canopy. We're also seeing that in a way that does not play out equitably for people of color and lower income. So we have completed an equity atlas for the entire state as to those areas that have increased deficit in urban tree canopy. And now we are rapidly accelerating the investments we're trying to make in those areas. Uh, Time is up. Thank you. Dang. <laughs> Hard. Uh, are there any others? Oh, Lori. Yes, go ahead. Thanks, Amy. I, um, I'm a pretty avid uh, hiker and I'm out on the public lands all the time. We're seeing a lot of the trails um, and the trail system get a lot of overuse as population has grown here in the Northwest. What, what can your office do to either open up more trails for use or how do we mitigate the damage that we're seeing? So great question. So I oversee the second largest amount of recreation land in Washington State, second only to the federal government. Um, I am very committed to making sure everyone has access to our public lands and trying to make sure that we create opportunities in every community to be able to get out more. Um, one of the most significant challenges, and we've increased our recreation trail building. We partner with nonprofits like Washington Trails Association, Evergreen Cycle Club. We have been building uh, for the first time a regional planning effort, a regional planning effort that literally, like Bellingham to Baker, is a perfect example where we planned every type of recuse from Baker to Bellingham for people to get out. The biggest challenge we have is money. Every single year we have put forward some pretty significant requests for funding from the legislature that would actually be able to fund the trail building, that would fund more access points and even fund more ability to increase the amount of recreation areas we have. Unfortunately, given our challenges in getting funding, that is the area we've had very little luck, but we continue to try to use everything we can to stretch it and get more. Thank you. Jason, yes, go ahead. 
you know, one of the reasons why I came to the uh, Northwest is the hiking, the trees, the mountains, and like Lori, I just love the outdoors. And um, I would love to see, and I, I don't know your role versus the, the executive role versus legislation role and how all this works, but I wouldn't mind seeing more uh, accessibility parking for people with disabilities and more access, readable signs, and that kind of uh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, could you give me a few comments of how your department can help in that situation? So first, we've been um, increasing our signage and actually improving our level of signage um, in most of our recreation areas. Um, um, they were pretty old and outdated and did not have much information. I think Raging River is a perfect example of, the, of really how exciting that communication and information is. Um, in addition, we are now developing actually a rec plan for the entire state with the goal of truly connecting the north to the south, east to the west, so every community there's an ability for recreation. And I signed an agreement with the federal government um, that enables us now to do recreation um, as well as salmon habitat restoration, forest health, and other work on federal lands so that we can correct connect our state and federal lands. We're the only agency with that ability. Um, and our goal is now to actually increase the opportunities for recreation connecting state and federal. I can't stress enough though, how little money we are getting. In fact, it's usually very little to zero from the legislature for recreation. And having your voice and others, um, we are built a huge coalition outside and now we built a rec caucus in the legislature. It came from my leadership so that we could get more legislators understanding the importance of it and investing it for our health, our economy, and our environment. Thank you so much for your leadership and everything you do for the state. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Uh, let's see. I wanted to actually, well, it's not really a question, but uh, I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the revenue stream that you were talking uh, about with the legislature, uh, a new rev <laughs> revenue stream. Do you mean on recreation or, I mean, so uh, we- Just yeah. just in general, like uh, I think you said that there was a bill that you were trying to get passed through and I wanted to give you an opportunity to explain what that is. Yeah, no, great. Okay, and so for the most part, we go to the legislature on a number of key funding areas. One is wildfire and forest health. Um, with this plan in place, we spend right now on average $153 million a year fighting wildfires. We are literally paying with a credit card and we're paying for to react in the face of smoke and flames. And my belief is, since we're going to pay anyways, why not pay in a proactive approach of investing upfront in the forest health and the ability to make our forest more resilient and in wildfire fighting resources. I have now 10 helicopters to fight fires in the entire state and every single one of them fought in the Vietnam War. Every, how many of you guys are driving the car from the Vietnam War era. And we're putting our pilots and our firefighters' lives on the line with old outdated equipment. Um, Ten we seconds. got to be investing in it. So the funding approach for dedicated revenue, it was going to be um, a premium surcharge on about $5 a policy. Property, it would generate $62.5 million a year um, to be able to actually implement both the forest health and the wildfire plan. Uh, it has not been successful. We are going to be looking at other revenue opportunities, especially with COVID, because we're going to have a huge crisis, as we know, in multiple areas because of the revenue. Thank you. And we are at 19 minutes, so why don't you go ahead with that one minute wrap up? Yeah, so thank you again for the opportunity to come in front of you. Um, I, I love the work I'm doing. I still have a significant amount of work left to do. Everything from the leadership we've shown in wildfire and forest health to climate change, uh, not only the context of the carbon sequestration and our ability to create a market actually to invest in carbon sequestration, but also the climate resilience plan. It's the first one ever in this state. It just got uh, finished early this year. But in addition to the rural economic development work that we're doing all the way to the urban and providing more housing 
and commercial development so that we can provide the resources people need while funding schools and our communities. I get up every morning loving to do this work. I have a lot more to do, um, including expanding the recreation across the state so every single child and person can get outdoors and love what we have been so blessed with and have the same commitment to the environment that uh, I, myself and so many of you have. So I would appreciate your endorsement and also your support in August and November. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening.